In terms of using the eight extras in the first trimester, the Renmai is, in my practice, the key. It is, I, there is very, very rarely a first trimester treatment where I'm not going to use the Renmai. And for all of the reasons that Yvonne talked about earlier, it's a really fitting um, vessel to use as your primary treatment strategy. It is the sea of yin. This is so much about softening. This is so much about allowing yourself to become the container, allowing your body to change, allowing yourself to slow down, allowing yourself to go take a nap in the middle of the day because you can't keep your eyes open anymore and pushing through that is not helping anybody. But that's not something that the young maiden would ever do. So there's a lot of cognitive and emotional acceptance that has to come along with making this shift. So the Renmai really supports that process. Um, it's the vessel of closure. And so for many women, when they're finally having a healthy pregnancy, they need to go through a process of healing and closure around the past. They need to let go of previous terminations that they've you know, elected to do. They need to process previous miscarriages. They need to process the stress and trauma of going through a fertility process. Um, so there's a lot emotionally that's happening and we can help support them getting some closure around that and moving on to the present moment, which is this is a healthy pregnancy. We are in a good place and let's look to the future. Um, the Red Maya is the vessel of bonding. Uh, I have a lot of conversations with my patients about, you know, they want to have an ultrasound every week in the first trimester. And fertility patients do. Um, patients who get pregnant on their own don't necessarily have to, but they want to. They want to see the baby so they can bond with the baby. And I am, um, you know, I sound like a broken record, but I say, you can bond with your baby without an ultrasound. Your baby is in you. So how about we find a way to connect with that energetically rather than needing this external validation that this thing exists. How about we get into a state of believing that this pregnancy is happening, is healthy, and is real, and that just by closing your eyes and connecting in, you're going to get a lot of information. You're going to hear stuff, you're going to see stuff, you're going to feel stuff, and it doesn't have to be until you're 25 weeks and, and feeling a kick. So. Let's, let's try to work on getting women to bond and connect with their pregnancy really early. That will help them in their whole decision-making process going forward, and we'll kind of get into that later, but that is it's laying the foundation for saying, this is about you and you. <laughs> you and this part of you that's growing into something else, and, and it doesn't, it's contained right, right here, and it doesn't need to be, um, it doesn't need to be validated externally. And the other piece of that is so many people will say, well, but what, you know, I've lost a pregnancy before, and what if it doesn't, um, what if it doesn't last? I can't bond. And my answer to that is bonding will not make it more painful if it doesn't work. Allowing yourself to, uh, explaining to your patient that by allowing themselves to feel connected to their developing fetus and to feel connected to the possibility of a good outcome is not going to make a miscarriage more devastating. And in some ways, it makes it a little bit less devastating. And the reason for that is if you're walking around for the first however many weeks of your pregnancy in a state of fight or flight because you think it's about to terminate itself, then when it does, you go from here to here. If you walk around in the first weeks of your pregnancy feeling like you are blessed, feeling like you have a healthy baby in you, feeling like this is a new opportunity and a fresh start, and it doesn't work, you go from here to here. And it still hurts, and there's still processing to do, but it's not processing from a place of, you know, I just got hit by a truck. It's processing from a place of, this is sad, I'm going to move through this sadness, I'm going to move on. So. I encourage my patients to allow themselves to feel as happy as they can in this early time and to try to treat a pregnancy as 
something that's completely unique and that there's no reason to expect that it's not going to work. So yeah, what Yvonne said is those happy hormones are better for a developing baby anyway, and that's absolutely true, and we know that's true. You know, the the amount of adrenaline and cortisol circulating in our bloodstream is going to affect the baby. So it, it's about making that decision to mother whatever's here right from go, not to use um, the first trimester as a way to protect yourself from the possible pain of it not happening, not working working out. Um, and the, the Renmai, is, it is the archetype of the mother. It is about embodying that maternal archetype. So they're really, in addition to all of these other things that it does, there can't be a better vessel to really focus on with your patients. Um, and it has a very strong resonance with the spleen and stomach, so it's a really great way to treat digestive stuff and fatigue. You can use spleen points. You can do things to um, help your patients symptomatically and still kind of stay within the trajectory. For more information on this or other ProD Live, distance, or online courses, please visit www.prodeseminars.com.